good afternoon everyone thank you for uh, shifting your place uh, it means a lot uh, so now i would like to welcome professor shubhra gaur to introduce our invited lectures for the session professor shubhra gaur is the chair of academic innovations and the faculty recruitment committee at mica the school of ideas thank you ma'am संक्षेप में ही कहा नहीं कि दस मिनट खींच ले नहीं सभी डेलीगेट्स को प्रणाम और मैं कहूं कि प्रिविलेज एंड ऑनर टू डू समथिंग इम्पॉसिबल विच इज इंट्रोड्यूस समन हु नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन बट आई एम अ डिटर्मिंड एंड कमिटेड पर्सन सो आई विल डू द नीडफुल इन वेरी फ्यू मिनट्स जैसे सर का आदेश है संक्षेप में कहना uh so professor ramadhar singh who has inspired and these are my words hundreds of scholars and uh, is a scholar extraordinary of nature now uh he's a distinguished university professor at ahmedabad university 1973 phd in social psychology and 2022 distinguished alumnus in psychological sciences of purdue university is a fellow of six professional bodies of psychology including the british psychological society american psychological association and in 2013 the association of psychological science included him among the faces and minds of psychological in science in from in india in 2022 the society for personality and social psychology also inducted him on its heritage wall of fame he had studied experimental psychology at ls college of bihar university as muzaffarpur in 1960s uh, when many of our parents weren't even married uh, he had previously served as a lecturer lecturer at patna university at leading other leading institutions like iit kanpur iim ahmedabad and distinguished professor at iim bangalore besides being a professor at national university of singapore I am in door bestowed upon him the first ever lifetime achievement award for excellence in research in 2021 and IIT Kanpur established an annual Prabha and Ramadhar Singh distinguished lecture in psychology in 2022 so on behalf of the convention uh, without in your door professor ramadhar singh i invite you to deliver your special keynote address Thanks. sir let's <laughs> uh good afternoon to each one of you also on behalf of amdavad university i welcome you to this 32nd conference of nio you know that psych program is new it was not the first batch of graduates have completed their degree nevertheless five or six of my colleagues have organized this so let's commend their effort you when when they approached me to lend my name i said no i want to be in background you be in figure so professor <laughs> urmil nanda biswas is the figure and what she has put up for a terrific conference we have and two persons i didn't want to even agree to give the talk because i thought guests should be talking not the host but professor rc tripathi <laughs> chairman of the scientific committee and professor biswas they insisted that i must talk so my job is to give one lecture in a year but they have made me to give this lecture within 15 days so if you find anything worthwhile credit should go to professor <laughs> urmil biswas and professor tripathi if there is any fault i take everything because in india everything explained by sanjog bhagya and bhagwan i don't believe in that so with this let me begin what is the task given here in january nature our prime minister made this statement he appealed to the delegates of indian science congress research be directed at making india self reliant in 2014 i had written a paper in omega reviewing the productivity in business school from there here is one quotation by s n misra 
He said, Indian institutions produce best and hardworking students who can compete anywhere in the world. But the very same institutions are not able to build a culture that can provide a world-class research environment and produce best of researchers. Why is this? Misra himself answered, our educational institutions have to explore and extend new frontiers of knowledge domain. They have to give priority to build a culture that the basic instinct of questioning is given primacy, where there is ample space for recreation of knowledge with changing time. So this is the task. That's why I selected how to build a responsible environment for research. So over almost uh, in 61, I started studying psychology, whatever I have seen. I had originally prepared so many, but since time, you know, then I had to cut. So main thing I would just share with you. First, what is the meaning of research? And I'm directing at my young students here. So we have many distinguished psychologists here. Please don't feel offended if I say these things. To me, research means questioning the status quo and offering a better alternative. I started my journey with this. I give you three examples. From IIT Kanpur and I am Ahmedabad. At my time, two-factor theory of job satisfaction was very popular which said context and content factors have non-additive effect. From IIT Kanpur, we saw they have additive effects. The second one, Victor Broom's 64 book, Work and Motivation, performance equals to motivation times ability. We should know motivation is average with ability. And third, Fred Fiddler contingency model of leadership effectiveness was very popular. We said his measures of situational favorableness and leadership style both are ignis fatuous, a deceptive hope. Let the model lay to rest. So this is the way I thought research is. Research is not to cooking your data to confirm somebody else. Research is to question and offering something that this is what one should be accepting. Now, people do research for what? Essentially, in my view, two things. One, to write a doctor before their name. This I say goal one. Second one is, which I have written here, goal two. You want to make a lasting contribution to knowledge. So get involved with peers and professors, publish some papers before writing your dissertation, submit articles from your dissertation before joining the job, and continue lifelong collaboration with peers and supervisors. You remember when Madam Keynote speaker also said that this, in G2, uh, this sustainable goal, lifelong learning is a goal. This is what we need. Now, goal one, Outsourcing agencies we have here. Okay, look at these three. They can find out institution, guide, topic, write for you, so on and so forth. Right? So it is now possible for one's PhD training, conferences, and publication and research papers to outsource. This is okay. Or goal two. The criteria are very rigorous. Let's look at what are the things. One is advancing the field. What do you do? You get research grants. You go to conferences like this. Number and understanding of your student supervised. Journal publication, chapter in edited volumes, citations in journal books and textbooks, invited colloquia at institutions keynote and invited addresses at conferences, awards and fellowship received from your professional. So if you are doing basic research, you would be judged along these criteria. If you are a great consultant, we have so many management professors here, for them solving problems of other people. 
And you can see here demands for consultation and fees charged, ratings by clients, acceptance of recommendations made, and finally, whether the problem has been solved or not. So if behavioral scientists are hired by UNO and we are not able to solve their problem. So what kind of expert we are? So th these are the criteria I mean. My recommendation is reform the PhD training. So original idea was that there is a guru, mentor, and a protege who train you to advance in a particular discipline. But that has been unfortunately replaced by goal one, doctor so-and-so. And in India, it is very professor, bracket doctor, and then your name. No professional textbook, conference, do it. Even our brochure, you would see more emphasis on professor. So th this is one. The second one, we have to, if we want to really meet the societal needs as prime minister, requested or appealed to us, we have to reorganize the PhD training, revamp it, and also evaluation of one's scholarship. So both conferences, because when you are doing PhD, go to conferences, you present, you get feedback. They say two minutes you have to present, five minutes you have to present. Nobody asks comment. This is not horror training, horror feedback, then we release somebody to market. So given PM's appeal, in my opinion, we are not ready to deliver what we are expected to do. So for that purpose, we must equip our psychology PhDs with knowledge and the skills to meet the challenges ahead. Okay? So what I have done in this lecture, I have organized in six parts, six sections. One, understanding and encouraging classic paradigmatic research, in which I, Professor Janak Pandey here, we were trained. Contemporary styles of research and super earlier I had written unprofessional, but then I thought it would be very rude. So I have changed the name contemporary styles. Ideas for improving research supervision. Contemporary styles of conferences and publications. Because I, I just came from a conference in Delhi and I will amuse you after some time. Ideas for improving a standard of conferences and publications. And finally, my concluding comments. I also thought whether I would have time to finish what I have been requested to do. So I said, when it is done, you would have two messages from me. Take away. So you need not attend the whole presentation. As long as you remember these two, my purpose would be achieved. One, the PhD training and research presented at conferences and published in journals in contemporary styles fall much below the classic standards. Message number one. Message number two, to restore public trust in psychology as a legitimate science. Our keynote speaker said evidence-based. Please take that message. We must undertake three things. Paradigmatic research, engage ourselves in self-renewal. PhD at 30, at 38 tenure, it cannot give you interest like fixed deposits. We have, we have to recharge and self-renew. And third, uphold the classic standard of research for peer pressure. You put something garbage on Social media, people start congratulating you. I will give you an example of that. So, okay. now let's come to understanding and encouraging classic research here. Very simple for many lesson for undergraduate students. When I decided to do honors at Bihar University, Guilford Psychometric Methods preface, I was impressed by this line. He said, the great philosopher Kant once asserted that psychology can never rise to the dignity of natural science because it is not possible to apply quantitative methods to its data. The sine qua non of science is measurement and the mathematical treatments of its data. You know, that red color Magra Hill big book of J.P. Guilford, I was so impressed. Later on, I also came with this quotation. 
when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. When you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of meager and unsatisfactory kind. It may be beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thought advanced to the stage of science. Think about what we are doing in the country and what is definition of a science, okay? So what is science? By professor, what I learned 50, 50, four years is still are relevant. He said, let's look at the real world, a status quo. And he said, it's a complex, incomprehensible, uninterpretable, uncontrollable. Just like Newton saw apple falling down. He did not see apple going up. So he engaged in scientific activity by creating simplicity, artificiality, predictability, precision, and creation of abstract abstractions or generalizations. So after the scientific activity, real world is changed with a better alternative here. And that alternative is what was complex earlier is now comprehensible, understandable, predictable, controllable. So when you do research, ask yourself, what have you done? So two objects in the universe seemingly gravitate toward each other. This is the simplest way I can present science to anyone or anyone who is aspiring to be a psychologist here. Okay. And this I took from my guru, whole life I'm devoted. Another thing, <laughs> error around the, what you find out from your research is not truth. Then what it is? Is a seemingly better alternative to the status quo truth? Answer is no. Science does not find out truth. Science finds out what is the error around what we say it is proxy of truth. You see here, that is why we teach you the measures of central tendency before measures of variability. Teachers say sum of a square divided by n is mean. He does not say that mean is representative of truth. When he teaches a standard deviation, a sum of deviation divided by n under root, he does not say this is telling error around the truth. This is the way I was trained and I'm sharing with you. Now I understand. In the, it has taken so many years to understand it. So the former approximates truth. The later tells this is the error. Like when our corona uh, vaccine came, Puna Center said it has 30% error margin. As good, it is as good as getting water infected in our body. But we got cured because we thought we are vaccinated. This is also psychological. We, we feel like that. So remember this one. And to me, our success as a science lies in this ability to specify error around the truth by using quantitative methods, which can't challenge us. And it is this success which had made psychology most sophisticated among social sciences. Now you see, we are getting Nobel Prize in economics and heavy demand for interdisciplinary research, marketing, management, economics, agriculture, medicine, provided we are trained so, this is that. So be clear of the research goal. We do research at three levels. First one is frequency claims. Number of people who use toilet, number of women manager who are in managerial positions. These are counting. These are at the level of a simple counting here. Politicians with clean, clean and criminal records. This is counting. Yes, you have generated some data. So your research is at frequency level. The second one would be association. We measure two things at the same time. In that case, Usually, we are establishing association between the two. So we usually, association is necessary for causation, but it does not establish causation. So 
usually correlation we calculate, multivariate we calculate, so on and so forth. The third one, third level is we do experiments. Throughout the lecture, Professor Laurie Foster said, experiments, experiments, evidence-based, right? What we do here, keeping all other things constant, does X of time one produce Y of time two when mediation? How is mediation? When is moderation? Means this effect can be produced by this mechanism under these circumstances like culture, gender, age, they are moderated style. So this is the way we do. And philosopher David Hume, he had warned philosophers at that time. They don't rely on simply logic. Do experiments to establish causation. Consequence is now experimental philosophy, experimental economics. You know, economics is a science in which you will know tomorrow. Why did the prediction go wrong yesterday? Is this science? <laughs> what is the predictability? And that's why they have started experimental economics now. Okay? Let's come to the paradigm research now. You know, Professor Pandera, when we went to that school, this is the book. I, I, I assume everyone has read. If I have not, then there is, there is not much. You can buy and read it. You know what Kuhn said, paradigm means a specific body of research which is accepted by a group of scientists. That's why I say peer pressure. Don't say for wrong thesis, don't say congratulations. And which consists of a specific procedures, measuring devices, empirical laws, and a specific theoretical structure. Now I'm emphasizing here two Peers are sources of information. Peers are a standard of evaluation. What you do becomes a standard for another people. So this is what I'm hammering. And behavior, cognition, emotion, motivation have been subject matter of so many disciplines. Mythology, philosophy, literature. Are they psychology? No, they are ideas for psychology. They are not psychological facts. What we do, literature and science are actually two sides of the same thing. Psychological scientists translate those ideas into reproducible and replicable phenomena. That's why Professor Foster said evidence-based. Anything you imagine is not psychology. You know, we have so many mantras in Sanskrit. We have rich culture. Yes, they did talk about psychology, but they are not psychology. Unless we convert them, make it reproducible, other people can replicate it, it is not science. I take you to Baramsi. You know, all the scholarly people are born in only Allahabad and Banaras. Look at Hajari Prasad Doibedi, not a psychologist. What Hajari Prasad Dvivedi wrote, his Padam Sri, so many award winner, he said, Purana Manush Mithkiya Yug Me Rahta Tha. Mithkiya Avarno Ko Hatakar, Usse Tathya Nwai, Arth Dene Bale Log Manu Vajjani Kahlate. Actual, evidence based. Not imagination, not arguments. And me, myths are uncovered by how scientist collects the data, not by how he or she analyzes. <laughs> Analysis is the later part. You, if you have collected data in a wrong way, no right conclusion can be drawn. But we go on drawing the conclusion. So now I describe two paradigms. Most of us do correlational research in this country. So a correlational paradigm, I would describe one experimental paradigm. And then you can see that actually there is a reciprocation between the two. If you are experimental, you have to do correlational research. If there is no correlation, there will be no causation. Then if you are personality psychologist, you can also do experiments when we say dynamics. This, this is what we are doing. So let's look at this. To start any research program, start with a very simple study in which we have 
a base relationship x cause predictor they all mean is a function so y which is your response criterion outcome is a function of x which is cause this and this this is the first stage x produces y once you establish it you can go in different directions and here i show you the four one is what are the other x which can produce that y then you can go to the next one what what are the other y which can be produced by the same x then we can go to refinement of that relationship mediation and moderation then you can go to explanation theory building which is the final goal of a research and that gives us a theory theory explains allows us to predict model represents so the model of research i have given you theory would explain like this this is my okay. now i have produced an example of it like a base relationship attraction is a positive linear function of similar attitudes then the stimulus generality would be attraction is a positive linear function of proportion of similar activities and similar personality traits response generality would be intention to get married is a positive linear function of proportion of similar attitudes refinement would be similar attitudes draw people together by building trust trust is a mediator between them and more so when they are of low than high need for belongingness so moderation and mediation i have done here and finally we come to theory building trust is the foundation of interpersonal relationships you see like this is the way if, if one is doing experiment this is the way we start a research program if you are doing correlational research same framework is useful but this time develop a measure of individual difference this is the first stage but still here you have to use quantification construct validation would be convergent and divergent predictive validity would be concurrent and oh, criterion related would be concurrent and predictive now and in future so once you do it now you have a toy and we can move around any direction so what are the other things which can produce that individual difference we call it antecedents then we come to a structure most of our research particularly in ob i know are at this level finding out correlation a structure of the individual difference sometime organizational justice sometime organizational citizenship so on and so forth okay then we come to dynamics of why mediation and moderation and finally we come to change and control of why moderated mediation and when we that's the final goal because we want to change and control a particular individual difference i see a poster there somebody you know helping us to become very happy so for them this program would be very nice okay. so once we change and control something we are able to explain why do people differ with respect to this behavior so again i can give one example from since i work in a business school a 10 item measure of work de dedication reliability constructive validity convergent divergent criterion related validity concurrent now and predictive future you have to establish antecedents of work causes leading to work dedication socialization and education a structure would be correlates behavior and characteristics related to work dedication identification with organization conformity to norms and laws creativity and no nonsense style dynamic should be motivation for excellence as a mediator organizational culture or politics should be moderator and change and control would be what call moderated mediation organizational interventions of goal setting and performance appraisal motivate a staff for excellence mediator and organizational politics and injustice in allocation of rewards and resources moderate motivation and hence work motivation so experimental or correlational 
if one is doing research in a systematic way, then he or she would be able to understand. Otherwise, here, I am giving you a topic. Again, I said Banaras and Allahabad produce a scholar. So this is from Kasi Natsi. He said, this is one Nobel Rehanem Raghu, so that old man like me realized one day. शरीफ इंसान का मतलब होता है निरर्थक आदमी भले आदमी का मतलब है कायर आदमी जब कोई आपको विद्वान कहे तो इसका अर्थ मूर्ख समझिए और जब कोई सम्मानित कहे तो दयनीय समझिए यू मे लाफ एट इट बट दिस इज द आइडिया द रिस्पॉन्स ऑल द रिवार्ड एलोकेशन रिसर्च फ्रॉम आई आई एम आई डन दैट वेन वी एलोकेट रिसोर्सेस मनी we think one way but while giving like who should be invited for a lecture here you think so and so is meritorious but we invite somebody else this is response distortion subjective feelings and external feelings is a good area of still research in the country so at next stage if you do paradigmatic research things become very very easy Somebody say, I will collect your data. Somebody else would analyze. Then you are not doing research. In paradigm research, collection of data, analysis of data become very clear. It tells you how you are going to even interpret your results. So by presenting the, you know, like if you are supervising one student, you do not allow him or her to talk to another colleague. No, this is not research culture. This is not research environment. Here, when you present to peer, faculty members, they criticize, they give you feedback. Then you learn that is what kind of research I have done. Preparing draft, sending other people for comments, revising it. If somebody says, then you become angry. Also, is criticizing me. No. If I write and give you something, you make a point. I revise it. That this fellow has done a service to me. clear writing of science of part i was looking at titles of many presentations many an empirical study redundant a case of redundant come directly to the title so generally 12 word title we have which gives the shortest summary of the research to draw the attention a abstract is to make him or her Interested in reading the report. Sometimes you read the abstract and you cannot understand anything. Good number of cases I found here. Okay, so in India, like some people ask for comment, I said don't do this in title. He said no, sir, it is already registered for two years. We cannot change it. I recommend you make title of your thesis, <laughs> write abstract after you write the thesis. You do research in a topic. <laughs> Title and abstract would be written after you have written the thesis here. So this practice we need to change. How much time I have now? This part I have done. Now it's very humorous part. You would not believe that we have been doing even this. Okay. Now let's look at research student then and now. So one PhD student. Of Lucknow going to his village, and no train and bus was available, so he took took ride in a truck. So here is the conversation between the PhD student and the truck driver. Sir Lal Sulk is also Padam Sri has written Rag Darbari. There is a movie also. So truck driver asks Sir Iban Ji, "Aaj kal kya kar rahe hain?" So PhD student says, "Kaha ki ghas khod rahe hain? Kaha ja khulaasa kijiye." उसने कहा कहा तो कि घास खोद रहा हूं इसी को अंग्रेजी में कहते हैं रिसर्च करना पर साल एम किया था इस बार रिसर्च कर रहा हूं सो दिस इज एट दैट टाइम इफ यू आस्क ए स्टूडेंट नाउ दे वुड से सर प्लीज डोंट वरी फॉर मी एनी वन हु इज रजिस्टर्ड फॉर पीएचडी गेट्स इट सो देन एंड नाउ देर इज नॉट मच डिफरेंस बिटवीन सिक्सटी एट टू थाउजेंड थ्री PhD is very easily available here. Research and supervision. Again, science. That nature of January is to say that in India, between 2000 uh, by 16, we had 17,800 PhD degrees, and in 2016 we have 25,095 doctoral dissertation. It's over. 
Have I completed one hour? When I started? Yeah, huh? yeah that's, that's right. At 12, 17, I started. Right? No, 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 no. So if you have made me work, give me a chance to tell them what I think, right? Okay. So this is given here. One supervisor told his student, your dissertation is one of the requirements of your doctoral degree. Submit something and revise it if examiners have any issue. Okay. Contemporary style of evaluation. This dissertation is a significant contribution to knowledge. Another contemporary style. This thesis has more strength than we can assess. Hence, worth accepting. How would the institution know that these two examiners had read the thesis? Think about it. This is the standard of evaluation. Example of two dissertations I give you. Let's look at an empirical study of psychosocial correlates of religiosity and caste prejudice in Indian context. Do you see anything? Empirical study correlates Indian context. Second example, in LinkedIn, I saw this. Equanimity and its psychosocial health concomitants. And then the student had proudly put that. And then I saw 26 reaction and president of a, one of the national bodies said, made that comment. When I started thinking, oh, what the hell this student has done? So I wrote this truly high sounding title. If the measures were taken simultaneously, psychological correlates of equanimity might have been a simpler and more informative title. You may hate me for sharing this, but these lapses evince what supervisors never take research guidance seriously, nor do examiners take evaluation of the dissertation seriously. These things are supporting. This is what we are doing in PhD. I have a produced PhD. Whoever I meet say I have 25 to 25 PhD I have produced. I started talking, what is one tail test, two tail test? What is, what is type one error, type two error? No idea. So I thought these supervisors are like a traffic policeman. Who is still who himself aesthetic and other, asking other people to move on? Why this is <laughs> running around? Aren't these people acting like the traffic policeman who is standing and telling other people to move on? Is this our standard of PhD? Mohan Bhagwat, RSS chief, said, Desh mein degree aan, bade astar par der di ja rahi hai. Lekin research ke kaam mein badi susti hai. So even outsiders are noticing that we are not taking our work seriously. Okay. After that, new education plan has come. Look at very carefully. We serve on this committee. Who signed all these things? Not the secretary. Look at this. University Grant Commission, UGC of India. I removed that you don't have to publish paper. You can get degree directly. Right? So I wrote on LinkedIn. What a wrong decision. Any doctoral dissertation approved at most universities of any quality. Those who are not themselves initiated to research are guiding doctoral research. Peer reviews of an article before the submission of the dissertation are right steps toward research initiation. A retired professor of IIT wrote, Sir, in most universities, the quality of thesis and paper is really bad. Also, there are moral, social obligations to pass the thesis. Quality of work is very poor, right? Should I give my ideas now or time is up? I say, first look for a potential. Who should be? You have to be very careful about who should be your supervisor. Look at the website. Supervisor must mentor the student such that he or she generates helps in generating alternative interpretation method or analysis of the published findings. If the supervisor has a research program, 
you extend, refute, amend it, if he she does not have, you initiate it. This is the way of doing research here, okay? Criteria for choosing supervisor, I usually go to the website and check what people have written about themselves. So, website should indicate at least two single or first letter articles in prime journals of the field, not in online paid journals. These days, business schools have A, B, C, D, and everyone says, I have an A. I don't know what is the standard of that when the title is wrong. Reported complete information. People say many publications, order of authorship is very, whether one has written or collected data. You also have to check. Third one, taken sabbatical. If somebody is tenured, has he or she gone on sabbatical, recharge, if not, not suitable. And also check citation in ResearchGate or Google Scholar. And anyone with no to this title imply danger in your research. After your research, you would become doctor, but really would not make any contribution. So focus, rigor, relevance, and communication. I say no research is solved mental health problem or poverty problem of India. A specific question to answer it. Number two, never undertake a study because it was not done in India. This is also a fashion here. Give equal importance to rigor and relevance. No research can be relevant without rigor. After the PhD degree, the doctor must be able to describe the research to outsider in two and three sentences. When he was around, regression lagaye, anoba lagaye, means training is really inadequate. Okay. I think time is running. So one conference example, I, recently I went to a conference in Delhi and I was amused. Began Bhavan conference. This is announcement of the conference. 900 registered delegates. First look at, I was misled because Delhi University, I was said it's a Delhi University function. So you see Department of Psychology, Delhi and Indian Institute of Psychology, and there is and in between and say organize JJ. 900 psychologists, nobody objected to this. Okay. Then B is missing there, B is missing after this. And here, column between psychology and technology in shaping the world. None of us felt uncomfortable with it. This is our threshold of reaction, but you will be glad to know. Honorable Minister of Education, Pradhanji, and Professor Jaina, they were only two who did not conform to this error. They did not put color. This is the level of professionalism in our country here. So, keynote, look at the keynote, key and note separate. Del and what do these errors point out? Are we negligent? Or there is a rise of positive psychology? India mein log dukhi is liya hai ki khusi nahi rahate hai. Khusi rahane lagay to dukh hat jayega. So positivity of doing something. Do it or don't do it. If there is a science, we do it perfectly or we don't do it. But compromising a standard like this, is doing damage to so many younger people. Here is another interesting. This is by, look at the title of this paper. I, I think first, is cast as an existing realism in language development. What they did, they took schedule cast people at time one, time two, did something, said there is a change. That change is because they are low regression toward the mean. Get changes because of time one, time two. You have to have a control condition where at time one and time two, you do not do anything. So three means should be the same only. So they do also, what is the take a look at the abstract here. So if there is a scientific committee, what did they do with this in accepting it? Would these people come and say, I presented a paper at conference? There is another, a paper by mentor and protogy. You see, let me give one example from psychological studies also. 
one day you are reading it, look at the abstract of the first part. I think she has done something with her. Read the abstract, the present study aspired to explore, right? And using correlation, multiple regression, mediation analysis, hierarchical, Sobel test, Budapest estimates. All these are in abstract. I thought she should have written something like this. The author obtained ratings of gratitude, resilience, and vitality from college students. The positive correlation between gratitude and vitality was significantly reduced when both gratitude and resilience were simultaneously used as predictors. Results suggested a possible mediating role of resilience in gratitude vitality relation. Relation, not relationship, relationship between human beings, relation between variables. So reviewer, my question is, whom would you blame for such slackness? Authors, the handling editor reviewers, the proof readers or the publisher? Ask these questions. It may appear very negative, but no, this is not negative. How much we are encouraging carelessness? Publishing in past, there is another trend. If you want to publish something in past year, that option is also available. So in IIT Kanpur, one associate, associate professor wrote a paper and submitted to Indian Journal of Public Administration. So they, in 73, he submitted and they published in 71 or two. So his colleague went to court saying he used his position to get the paper published when he was not associate professor. I have been hearing that Indian Council of Philosophical Research is also a big supporter of NIO and psychology has become Indian philosophy. They also asked me to write something. So I wrote in 70 with all the information up to 17 and they published in 15 issue without my knowledge. So on my bio data, I have written this, submitted in 17, protest made to the editor and publisher for publishing the article in back issue without knowledge of the author. Think about this. After 50 years, anyone who would review would say that I, I was fraud because I was employee of Bangalore in IIM 15. In 17, I am at Ahmedabad. And that paper has been published in a back issue. This I call professional styles of conferences and publications. Contemporary styles. Okay. okay. Some ideas I give you how to improve. You see, no conferences like Indian wedding in which you have to honor dada, mama, nana, dada, dadi. Invite few person who is doing, let there be a discussion, we give feedback, we learn. So the person comes to inspire us, share his knowledge. It's not honorary like this. So I, I, I'm just not to collect some money like 900 people. <laughs> the 900 at Vigyan Bhavan. Okay, so this is all I'm saying, it is unfair. If you edit a book, all the chapter write by time, publish by time, otherwise you are playing with science. This is what I'm uh, saying. So it is duty of the editor to read the final version before sending the manuscript to the press and ensuring that the book or issue should be come on the right time. It cannot be that things go on doing. No raw data, no publication. Not only in psychology. You know, editor-in-chief of molecular brain he handled 180 manuscripts and decided to invite 41 to resubmit, but with, with a raw data. So of the 41, 21 people said, I have no raw data. So they have written paper without data. Of, of the remaining 20, 19 were rejected because conclusion findings could not come from the data submitted, okay? So that editor has said that in cancer, from the raw data, only 25 and 36% of the published results 
can be produced in cancer research and psychology respectively. So at least we are better than cancer research. 36% of our findings are replicable. So you see here, so from your data, using your code, using your analysis, can I reproduce your finding? Is reproducibility. Using another sample, another setting, another method, can I replicate your finding? Is replicability. Let's be clear to it. What is the solution now? Consequence is one, store your raw data. I had to struggle. Okay. Pre register your study. How you will do, what is your prediction, how many data you would collect, and undertake a paradigm research. I bet this would happen time, not I wonder what would happen time. That kind of research is not going to help here. So what can we do from India? You know, I see SSR has inflaminate. We have everything. We have all laws, but we are not able to implement. Right? Okay. So I had to struggle with so many things, you know, this form, that from CD, it go to court, notarized, all I did. Then they said, I would not have your data. So I put here in 10 minutes, <laughs> got the paper published. I am saying even professional bodies which are bringing about the journal should insist for making the data public in domain. Now I have come to the concluding comments. I have 10 more minutes, my dear. <laughs> okay. Self-renewal is the panacea. We have no other, unless the professor change, no program can be reached. So, one structural training has a life cycle of no more than five, six years. In order to be a good mentor, the faculty member has to be more knowledgeable than the student supervised. Submit karo, if supervisor says, then revive. A student, shouldn't we then be, I'm asking four questions to each one of us, think about it. Shouldn't we be generating half yearly feedback on whether one is developing and in which direction? Number two, going on sabbatical regularly for self-renewal. Go with the graduate student, know the literature, know the technology. Moving from one institution to another institution. Don't perch yourself in one institution. Going to another, you have to go and reestablish with the colleague and grow. And wherever you go, don't go to see what happens. Go there to make things happen. This is what I followed throughout my life. IIT Kanpur, Patna University, IIM, and US Bangalore, Ahmedabad University. And Benjamin Franklin had said this. If you are finished changing, you are finished. Another, safeguarding psychology as a science. We now and age live and work in an academic market. It's not academic society. Colleagues expect mere praise, not candid comments. Dissertations are approved not for their merit, but for examination fees or reciprocation. I approve your student, you approve mine. This is killing the goods. Don't kill this golden goods. We agree to deliver a lecture, but rarely prepare such that shows any respect for the audience. Likewise, we agree to contribute a chapter in a detailed volume, but never finish on time and delay the publication process. Is this professionalism? Institutions like Prerna, Hackers or Indian Institute of Technology, if you would go to a website, many a student have written email saying that you have cheated my 50,000 and not reading my email. Okay. Isn't, I ask, isn't the duty of our national professional bodies of psychology, such as NIO, to watch such service providers to safeguard public interest in psychology as a science? I hope that my automatic observations I did not put much effort. It comes and I keep a record of it. Would prevent us from committing the blunders pointed out earlier in supervision, evaluation, conferences, and publications of the future. Now, after Kanorna, I have become devotee of Munshi Premchand. So he said, 
इन हाई स्कूल आई हेड रेड अपने उत्तरदायित्व का ज्ञान बहुधा हमारे संकुचित व्यवहारों का सुधारक होता है इन कोरोना पीरियड आई रेड अगर दूसरे को अपने कर्तव्य का विचार न हो तो इसका यह मतलब तो नहीं है कि मैं अपने कर्तव्य पर विचार न करूं कंसिस्टेंट विथ माई रिसर्च ऑन मेटा नॉर्म इन्फोर्समेंट वॉट यू डू इज वेरी मच माई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इट यू कैन नॉट से नॉन ऑफ यूर बिजनेस आई कैन कुक डेटा आई कैन राइट रॉन्ग टाइटल नो यू आर डेमेजिंग माई रिप्यूटेशन माई प्रोफेशन सो दिस इज आई से वॉट एनी वन डज फ्रॉम माई सोशल सर्कल इज माई रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी यू ऑट टू प्रोटेक्ट द इमेज सो एट पर्सनल लेवल I have no regret of being a psychologist. At a collective level, I do regret that we have not become Daniel Kahneman, we have not become Richard Thaler. We have no no psychologist has ever been appointed on our planning commission or Niti Ayo. This is time to think about it. So now I am blaming each one of us. we are to be blamed no less than others around us so let us build a responsible environment for research and sustain public interest in psychology as a legitimate science so thank you very much for coming to amdavad university this conference and professor tirpathi and professor urmil biswas for putting me under tremendous stress to prepare it and i hope my spine continues to function thank you very much now three minutes left yes 1217 i start thank you so much sir thank you for the saying for your valuable insights ranging from individual researchers at all levels early levels as well as mid career and senior and also policy makers in institutions for uh, rejuvenating the research culture and doctoral programs thank you so much indeed and this came straight from the heart and i am sure they have reached everyone uh, and will go a long way in inspiring and giving directions to people so thank you so much um i have another and a big, big round of applause for professor singh रोल मॉडल टू सो मेनी ऑफ आस प्रोफेसर विंध्या शी इज फॉर्मरली विद टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेज हैदराबाद कैंपस एंड इज इट्स डेप्यूटी डायरेक्टर एंड प्रोफेसर ऑफ साइकोलॉजी She has been the recipient of several awards and fellowships, including the South Asian Visiting Scholarship at Oxford University, Fulbright Visiting Lectureship at USA, Visiting Professorship at Yotovos Larned University, Hungary, and University of Gothenburg, Sweden. Her research interests are located in the interface of psychology and feminism, and have focused on gender and mental health, violence against women. trafficking feminist counseling and psychological dynamics of women and political activism her publications include the co-edited handbook of international feminisms perspectives on psychology women culture and rights by springer and has won the distinguished publication award from the association of women in psychology usa she has had self she has led several research projects sponsored by world bank gates foundation plan india icrw ugc and the icssr amongst many others she combines her passion for research and teaching with designing and implementing interventions and capacity building programs at the intersections of gender development mental health and human rights uh, she was the first project director of the sakhi one stop centers for gender based violence a project for which uh, tis hyderabad is a knowledge partner with the government of telangana and operating in 33 districts of telangana state she has been the past president and secretary general 
of the National Academy of Psychology. And with great pleasure and personal delight, I invite Professor Vindya on the stage and deliver the special address to the NOP convention gathered here. Round of applause for her. Thank you. And it's, I know it's close to lunchtime, so I appreciate your patience uh, in being with, uh, with me in this uh, session. Um, I'll, uh, for reasons of time, I will straight away plunge into the title of my session, which is uh, Integrating Mental Health in Development, Insights from Some uh, Recent Initiatives. My argument is, uh, this doesn't move. This one, this or this? The last. Yeah, yeah. My argument is a very simple and straightforward one, and as I said, I will immediately, uh, you know, start with it. It is based on two recent studies that I did, uh, two recent uh, impact evaluation uh, studies. Uh, one was an evaluation of what what was termed as disability inclusive development model. And this was implemented in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And the second study which I did was for uh, psychosocial intervention for farmer suicides in Maharashtra. So based on these two uh, 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 assessment studies, um, this is my argument. And as I said, it's a very simple and straightforward one, which argues for integrating mental health in development activity. Now, uh, very quickly, if you look at the recent milestones, uh, major milestones in policy formulation of mental health and development, uh, and I'm here, I'm talking about the global scene. One is, of course, the United Nations Convention on Rights of People with Disabilities, which is popularly known as CRPD, 2006, and ratified by India as well in 2007. Now, the reason why this is considered to be an important milestone is that it was the first internationally accepted legally binding treaty, which uh, had a comprehensive portfolio of disability rights. Uh, second, it was located in a social disability model which means that it did not look at any form of disability, not just physical disability, but even psychosocial disability. It did not look at any form of disability in terms of individual deficiency, but looked at disability in terms of a socially constructed, environmentally determined uh, barriers and impediments to rights. So uh, it was located in this kind of a disability model. And therefore, since it uh, represented a complete paradigm shift, it had the potential to uh, uh, influence practice as well. The second is a very important landmark document of the World Health Organization on mental health and poverty, uh, wherein uh, for the very first time, we got a very clear indication that mental health is being recognized as a critical indicator of human development. Uh, and as you all uh, know, and since morning, we have been talking about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. But the, in the earlier avatar, uh, which was the Millennium Development Goals, in fact, mental health was not even mentioned, not recognized. Whereas in the SDGs, we find for the first time that there has been an integration of mental health in implementation of sustainable development goals to achieve a whole range of development outcomes for, uh, ranging from poverty alleviation to improving education, uh, health, and so on. So these two can be considered to be, uh, you know, not just in India, but all over, uh, to be key landmarks or milestones in the policy formulation of mental health and development. Now, given this background, uh, what has been the impact on uh, the mental health policy environment in India? First, uh, it is now, mental health is now understood as an issue that cross cuts 
you know, it's a cross-cutting issue across development concerns, such as poverty, social inequalities, just to name a few. And we all know, we are aware uh, that in India, poverty and social inequalities, uh, it's not just economic, but social inequalities of varied kinds are one of the crucial development concerns. So mental health is now understood as a cross-cutting issue. That has been one of the um, uh, you know, takeaways from the kind of milestones that we have had. The second is that there is increasing attention being paid to community-based models of care rather than the earlier institutional-based, custodial-based uh, model of care. So this has also been a kind of a shift uh, which has uh, come about. And uh, furthermore, we have had these two laws in place, the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 and the Mental Health Care uh, uh, Act 2017, which have tried to give effect to the provisions of the CRPD. And I will not go into details of these acts, but just to draw your attention to two key elements of these two new recent legislations that we've had in the country. One is uh, rights-based mental health care, uh, which is being emphasized. Earlier, we did not find an acknowledgement of this term, but provision, protection, and promotion of rights-based mental health care is a key element that uh, is emphasized in these laws. And the second, both these laws enjoin upon the state as well as mental health professionals for ensuring protection of autonomy and dignity of people with any kind of disability. So these two are probably key elements that we can uh, understand uh, from not only these two legislations, but the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the impact uh, it has had on understanding mental health policy today in India. Uh, but, but despite these, uh, this recognition that mental health is crucially linked to development, uh, and by development, I mean right from poverty to all kinds of social inequalities, there, there still remain some critical notes and gaps. One of the first is that the WHO itself has recognized that mental health has remained one of the most neglected yet essential development issues in achieving development goals. So when we are talking about development goals like poverty eradication or promotion of education and so on, mental health somehow still has remained neglected. The second uh, critical note is that the, we have the National Mental Health Program, which emphasizes, of course, availability of mental health services to all. It emphasizes provision of community mental health services, but the effort of the NMHP, the National Mental Health Program, has been towards integration of mental health care with general and primary health care. So the idea is that if mental health is integrated in primary health care, then we will be able to ensure availability of mental health services to all. But again, the criticism is that the key barrier to this kind of an integration, that means mental health being made part of primary uh, health care, is that the PHCs, the primary health care centers, are already terribly uh, burdened in terms of, uh, you know, overload of patients, in terms of high, uh, not only patient turnover, but uh, staff shortages, funding uh, shortages, etc. So how can one make mental health care get integrated into primary health care is a very big question. The second and a much more critical strident uh, criticism comes from Jane and Jadav, who say, that the vision of minimum mental health care as in the national mental health uh, program is equated with medication, is not user-centered and relies on pharmacological solutions for psychosocial problems. So you cannot have medication as a solution to psychosocial problems is what uh, is one of the criticisms. The third, and which is much more, uh, you know, dominant, is that 
mental health still continues to be perceived as a specialist domain. You know, uh, it is considered to be that of a domain of the experts with limited relation to social development policies and programs. And also since mental health has always been looked upon into, uh, as individual centered, it's, it appears as if it does not have any link or any relation to social development policies and programs. So these are some of the uh, very strong criticisms, uh, you know, voiced against the way mental health uh, does not have any integration with development. And when you look at, see, I'm sure all of you are aware in India, we have large number of development organizations. The NGOs in the development sector are a huge uh, thriving sector now, precisely because of the kind of problems we have. But mental health organizations, uh, community mental health organizations and development organizations, they currently work in vertical silos. That means there is no you know, cross talk, no dialogue, no conversation between the two. So the community mental health organizations, which are of course definitely better than the earlier uh, custodial model, uh, custodial based models of care, they of course identify, provide uh, treatment uh, services. And there is an excellent book by Gayatri Balgopal and Aruna Kapani, recent one published in 2019, who, uh, who, who have compiled you know, uh, all the community mental health organizations in India and have written about, uh, it's a kind of a review of all these organizations. But the thing is, they are not oriented towards sustainable development. Neither are they aligned to the CRPD framework. So that means they do not take a rights-based approach to mental health care. On the other hand, if you look at the development practice of NGOs and of the state, they are, of course, definitely, as their name uh, shows, they are oriented towards structural inequalities, providing access to varied services, ranging from health, education, sanitation, water, etc. And they're also primarily directed at disadvantaged uh, populations. Uh, but a striking gap is the virtual absence of integration of mental health services. They do not talk about mental health because as I said earlier, mental health is always perceived as a specialist domain. So the development NGOs say, what do we have to do with mental health? And in, in many, many reviews of these organizations, it, it has been pointed out that although they are people-centered, they represent multi-level approaches to development, there is no reference to what is known as psychological capital, right? So what is the psychological capital that communities have? Uh, there is absolutely no mention of that. And so therefore, although in uh, SDGs, that is the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, promotion of mental health and well-being is listed as one of the goals, but this has not been given adequate attention by development organizations. So what the point I'm trying to make is that mental health and development organizations both work in, in or practically independent silos. So in the context of this crucial gap, some of the recent initiatives, which I was talking about uh, in the very beginning, the impact evaluation studies I did, they represent a shift away from the biomedical model to the view that, um, yeah, okay. uh, to, to the view that psychosocial health needs to be addressed within a larger framework of development. And they also show uh, these initiatives show that community mental health interventions should focus uh, as much on living conditions and not only on clinical pathology. You know, I mean, as students of psychology, we take a lot of pride in identifying pathology. So what, the, what these recent initiatives show is that please let us look at living conditions also and not so much only on clinical pathology. And therefore, there is a need to consider integrated and inclusive project design in development programs. So there must be some kind of a conversation between development NGOs as well as mental health uh, organizations so that this kind of a uh, gap can be uh, bridged. 
So the disability inclusive development model that I was talking about, this is the term that has that is being used, uh, is being implemented by a Pune based organization called Bapu Trust, and they have upscaled it and replicating it in two other states in MP and Chhattisgarh since uh, 2018. And very briefly, the main program features of this particular model is one they're building partnerships with organizations in the development sector. Because as I said, everybody doesn't have the required skill set and expertise. So Bapu Trust is a community mental health organization, but it is building partnerships with those in the development sector so that they can take this message of integration, the practice of inter uh, integration forward. Second, uh, because development NGOs do not have the required uh, skill set, uh, Bapu Trust provides the capacity building. And these are, again, for reasons of time, uh, you know, I will not be able to go into details of method and findings and so on, but very simple, accessible modules of core concepts of psychosocial health with emphasis on inclusion. In fact, inclusion is at the heart of CRPD. Article 19 talks about and inclusion is a very, very fundamental barrier. How do you include a person with psychosocial disability, uh, forget about other forms of disability, is a very fundamental question. So how can we do this uh, is what, uh, uh, you know, this organization trust uh, tries to do. And the third element is emphasis on linkages with support services, meaning, see, I may have some kind of psychosocial, uh, I may be in some, some kind of psychosocial distress, but if the cause of my distress is to be found in the environment, you know, because the, the population these people work with are obviously disadvantaged, rural based and so on. So my problem may be housing, my problem may be livelihood, my problem may be, uh, you know, lack of education. So um, the, this organization tries to pass this message that mental health as a standalone activity cannot go on. It has to be linked with support services. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that this model attempts to bridge the CRPD, the uh, Convention on Rights of People with Disabilities, and the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals vision through innovations in practice. So the model in practice, uh, very quickly, has a two-pronged uh, approach. Uh, one is at the community level. They start off with conducting baseline surveys, community contact through poster meetings, corner meetings, not only for mental health awareness, but also for dispelling myths myths and uh, misconceptions about uh, uh, you know, mental illness. Promotion of mental well-being. So it's not just a, uh, uh, you know, a treatment uh, oriented kind of a thing. It is promotion of mental well-being through the opportunity it gives for ventilation, self-reflection, self-care, nutrition through a series of fun-filled activities. Again, for reasons of time, I'm not able to go through this, um, you know, go tell you in detail, but there are really a lot of fun. You know, a uh, lot of these activities provide a very relaxing, energizing uh, atmosphere for uh, the people to uh, come forward, open up about the issues they are facing and uh, identification and gradation of those with psychosocial needs. So, so they actually have a gradation. Those who are in, uh, you know, a severe need, those who are not so much in severe need. So there is a kind of a gradation. And at the individual level, there is a customized plan. So each individual based customized plan for recovery, for inclusion, and uh, also, as I said earlier, support for varied needs. Uh, the other uh, uh, important feature of this model is convergence with state institutions. Now, all these development NGOs already have long and intensive engagement, uh, uh, but they try to emphasize that you need to co uh, coordinate with state institutions so they can be Panchayati Raj institutions, Asha workers, Anganwadi workers, school teachers, Mohalla committees. So a whole lot of community groups are involved. Uh, for ensuring inclusion and participation. Now, this uh, paradoxically, see, uh, uh, ultimately, you're trying to ensure 
the personal freedom and dignity of the person in psychosocial distress. But the paradox is that personal freedom ultimately relies on social solidarity because unless the community comes forward, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, in order to ensure participation and inclusion, then it will not work. So it is paradoxical, but the model is trying to show in practice that personal freedom ultimately relies on this social uh, solidarity and action, which translate the vision into practice. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that the model in practice shows that it, it emphasizes psychosocial well-being and inclusion rather than illness and pharmacological solutions. As students of psychology, we are keen to identify illness. But here, the emphasis is on psychosocial well-being, wellness, and inclusion. Um, the other one, again, for reasons of time, I'll go very brie uh, briefly, uh, which was the psychosocial intervention for farmers in Vidarbha, Maharashtra. Vidarbha is all of you are aware, uh, and there are colleagues from Maharashtra here, it was known as the epicenter of farmers' uh, suicides. And they had four goals here, four key objectives. One is, of course, remedial. Uh, that means identify people with psychosocial distress, provide care, make referrals elsewhere um, if, if they cannot handle it themselves. Preventive, conducting outreach for enhancing mental health awareness giving training to a range of healthcare workers, and finally, convergence, which is linkages with government, NGOs, public health institutes for livelihood programs and support. And I'll just show you one graph, uh, and this is not my data, it is the government data, that uh, pre and post intervention, when they introduced the intervention, uh, the inter intervention was introduced in 2016. And as you can see in 2017 and 18, the uh, number of farmers' suicides had gone down in two blocks of Vidarbha, Yavatmal, and Gatanji. This is just to give you an example of how uh, a psychosocial intervention could actually reduce the number of suicides in that particular region. So these interventions are probably examples of what has been now termed as a public mental health approach, where uh, development and mental health are not, as I said earlier, not in silos, you know, not uh, uh, separate and independent, but health, development, social and economic marginalization and human rights all come together. It is, they are also examples of what can be called as context-driven intersectional approach. Intersectionality is a term which unfortunately we in psychology don't use it much, <clears throat> but it is now almost a buzzword, not only in gender studies, but in, in several social sciences, because uh, uh, the kind of models, both the models that I spoke about, they focus on uh, intersecting oppressions. See, oppression does not just come from one social identity marker. It's not just class, not just caste, not just religion or whatever. It comes from the intersecting uh, oppre oppressions experienced by individuals and both of them focus on that. Um, the third uh, um, uh, uh, element that can be uh, highlighted here is that it drives home the message that unless there is an intersectoral convergence. So as I said, you have to partner, you have to work not only with the government, with NGOs, with you know other uh, public institutions in order for uh, in, in order for sustainable development and mental well-being, not to be mere slogans but to be actually uh, uh, see in practice. So I will end here by saying that one way forward, I'm not saying this is the way forward, one way forward for building a responsible psychology for India, you know, and I have a lot of issues with this term Indian psychology, but anyway, that's a different uh, issue, but a one way forward for building a responsible psychology, which is responsive, uh, to our realities, to our people, is that we definitely cannot work in, uh, you know, cannot afford to work in ivory towers of isolation. We need to collaborate uh, and we need uh, more collaborations for an integrated development agenda with mental health wellness at the center 
both as means and goal of development. So mental health is not only a means of development, but mental health <clears throat> can also be a goal for uh, development. And I'm talking here when I say collaboration, especially since there are so many students here, uh, you know, I mean, in terms of student internships, working with development organizations can give you an opportunity to have a really uh, hands-on kind of an experience of what are the real social realities in India today. So in terms of so, uh, student internships, in terms of research projects, in terms of partnering with several, uh, you know, whether it is state departments or uh, non-state actors like NGOs, the one way forward is if we can get these collaborations in place, we will be building a responsible psychology for India. So thank you very much for your time and attention.